Hello, my name is Andrew Collins and I'm a telly addict. You know what they say, those who can teach, teach, and those who can't teach, write sitcoms about teachers. Let's get on with some private reading. Guys, you need to bring your pyjamas in on Friday. Oh, we're having a sleepover. You? Qu'est-ce que vous avez fait pendant les vacances? I know what you're asking, but we don't speak French. Yes, hence the classes. That was David Williams in Big School, the new kid on BBC One, Jack Whitehall in Bad Education, back for its second term on BBC Three, and Angus Dayton in Waterloo Road, back for its ninth term on BBC One, and which, to be fair, isn't a sitcom. I just picked a bit that has a comic actor in it. The rest is all about issues. But if you want an accurate reflection of the state of education in Britain today, you need a documentary. Harrow was first established in 1572 to provide a classical education to 30 poor boys of the parish. Today, with parents paying school fees in excess of £30,000 a year... Sorry, that was only an accurate reflection of the state of education, as the members of the Tory cabinet who couldn't get into Eton know it. New series Harrow, a very British school, on Sky One. And what looked like a fascinating glimpse into how the 1% are snatched away from their parents and turned into future captains of industry. Welcome to Harrow. They haven't produced a Prime Minister since Churchill. Losers. With unique access inside this arcane borstal for kids whose only crime was to have been born to parents who can't wait to get rid of them, who wouldn't be fascinated to find out what life is like at a wizard-free Hogwarts? Unfortunately for misbehaving or making a show of himself in class, Dylan has got double, which is 60 lines, which is written on special paper, specially produced paper, um, whereby you've got to have the letters a certain size, um, and you have to get 40 characters on each line. That's quite interesting. They still do lines, except it's called double and it's really anal. Double anal, if you like. It was enlightening to see that the boys boast about it just like any kid at Grange Hill. I got 40 <laughs> double for getting my textbook in history. 40? I got 60 for biology. Yeah, but I'm still winning. I got 180. <laughs> no, I How got did you get 100? I've got 220. Privileged they may be, but I felt sorry for them. As if wearing stupid hats and calling everything by another word isn't stressful enough. Prefects are actually called bums and PE jerks. They're abandoned and not by the system. Parents leaving was quite, quite emotional. If it makes you so sad, don't send your kids away. Send them to a nice comp like this one. I came to this school knowing exactly what I wanted to achieve. Yes, improve exam results. Yes, make behaviour better. You're a cheeky bitch. But the most important thing for me is that alongside everything else that we give them, they walk out of here as decent human beings who are ready for the world. You can have that for free. Educating Yorkshire on Channel 4 is a follow-up to Educating Essex, which I mistakenly avoided, as I thought it had something to do with those awful depilated dipsticks on TOWIE, for which I should go to the bottom of the class. Did you stamp on his head? I don't know. I might have done. Right, thank you. We filmed over a year to find out what life is really like in one of our secondary schools. Unlike Harrow, Thornhill Community Academy in Dewsbury is a very British school. Unless you really don't care about the future of this country, it's required viewing. Not least because it boasts one of those maverick headmasters. A kind of useful version of the call centre's Neville, Mr Mitchell. Morning, mate. Thank you, Good. Morning, darling. My values are very traditional. I believe that students should turn up to school on time. They should say please and thank you. They should hold doors open. Translate this into Latin and it would surely work for Harrow. Turn up on time, every day, dressed appropriately, be nice to people and don't break the rules. What Thornhill's pub landlord is basically saying is, my gaff, my rules. That said, the first episode was all about the kids breaking the rules. From the ancient crime of smoking behind the bike sheds to the more modern one of calling someone the P-word, which precipitated an investigation to rival Plebgate. But star of the show was not one of the bad or the ugly, rather one of the good, Ryan, year eight, and his candidacy for the pupils' parliament. Because I think you'd, be a, you'd make a, a valuable addition to the team. Does that sound yeah. like something you'd be interested in? I'm intrigued. Intrigued? Good. Mr Burton just came up to me and said, how would you like to be part of Academy Parliament? And I was just like, I like that very much, thanks. Old head, young shoulders, can't lose. While Harrow, the alma mater of Palmerston, Peel, Churchill and Cumberbatch will probably crush Ryan, Thornhill gave him wings. 
you are going to be Prime Minister of this great country of ours at some point in the future. Is that right? Is that, is that the aim? Well, it will always be the dream. Maybe if he works really hard, Ryan could write his own sitcom about a school. I would never be in the army. Really? I could not stand shooting another man. Really? Really? I never would. Right. Well, that's, that's very noble of you. A big man shoots the guy. Mm. A bigger man walks away. All of a sudden, I see a glimmer of hope for this country. Educating Yorkshire makes me as proud to live here as the contestants on the Great British Bake Off, if only for the way they involuntarily lick their lips when Paul and Mary taste their cakes. They do look very special. I can taste the coconut. It's burnt, the sugar, actually. See how dark that is? Ooh. All I'm hearing now in my ears, mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Baker Alley, who we just saw, whose tip via social media gave me confidence with some experimental muffins I made this week. And while we're on lip-smacking competitive cookery, commiserations to worthy finalists on Celebrity Master Chef Janet Street Preacher and Les Dennis. Are we serving lunch today, Janet, or dinner? Don't even start gobbing at me, OK? You're running late, now hurry up. This dish Sorry. is the equivalent Shh. of building the Eiffel Tower. So, three of these desserts might be salvageable. It's difficult to say until we demold it, because the liquid centre might run out. Could mean failure for the whole dessert. But a hearty round of applause and an extra scallop on a bed of pea puree to whoever synced This Is The Day by The The to the big announcement. It's aid. fine tune and a fine winner, both of whom helped me get through my exams in the 80s. Now, a quick look at episode 3 of Stephen King's Under the Dome on Channel 5, which went all metatextual on us. Dude, you're not going to believe this. The guys got the Simpsons movie going on a loop. They totally saw the dome coming. When can I ask people to leave? And a moment in the spotlight for this tremendously anachronistic dandy from something called the Association for Project Management, who was on BBC News this week talking about the failure of Ian Duncan Smith's latest ruse, Universal Credit. That's a nice example of a piece of agile technology that's been piloted and carried out uh, and incrementally put live, pretty much without too much hoo-ha or ballyhoo. I'm always going to use that phrase from now on. Perhaps about Jamie Oliver's latest ruse, which arrived up amid well bare amounts of hoo-ha and ballyhoo. As stated before, I've always reserved a place at my table for Jamie. I liked him before he discovered the disadvantage when you just started grudgingly liking him. But his well-meaning attempt to bish-bash-bosh food poverty strained my devotion. This is exciting stuff, but we're all really passionate to get you guys shopping smart, cooking clever and wasting less. It wasn't the ungrammatically funky catchphrases or the hyperventilating lies. It takes literally a second to make a flavoured oil. It takes literally a second to get the pestle and mortar out. What bothered me were the assumptions built into his drive to save the proletariat money. Spend a bit of money to save money. This is beef. Spending to save is a great idea, if you have £14. If you haven't, a supermarket like the one Jamie advertised for 11 years will always steer you towards processed food. It's been slow roasting for four hours. You're going to have nice gravy in the bottom. It's gorgeous. And your oven's been on for four hours. That's all right. Utility bills are going down. So let's fire up this amazing money-saving roast. Grab a nice handful of rosemary. That's 80 p's worth of fresh rosemary. I'm going to use some smoky barbecued sauce. OK, two tablespoons. Uh, I'm then going to go for two tablespoons of chilli sauce and a little soy sauce. Those processed sauces are anywhere between 125 and 180 a bottle, and if you decant them at that rate, you're going to be replacing them once a fortnight. Sorry, am I nitpicking? Over here. This, this is kind of what's going to save the day. The freezer. Using frozen food is usually loads cheaper. Assuming you've got the finances and the room for a chest freezer, Jamie's heart is in the right place, we know that. But the moment you start lecturing the nation, you have to rein in those assumptions. You know, pretty much, it's a pint. Yo Valley Yogurt, £1.59. Family size innocent, £3. If these casual bits of set dressing reflect your fridge, then, well, perhaps it's best not to trust Jamie's maths. Literally 30 seconds. I still love him, but money saving meals had me yearning for the honesty of Nigella. Now, Syria. Welcome to the show! So, I was very much hoping 
Uh, I was very much hoping that uh, a big story would break during the commercial so we wouldn't have to talk about Syria, but that did not happen. Obviously, it's a dark story, but uh, you know what we do here, man? It's a comedy show. Yes, Jon Stewart reclaimed his swivel throne on The Daily Show on Comedy Central after a well-received stint by supply satirist John Oliver. And he, refreshed, and his writing team, psyched to have him back, miraculously managed to cover Syria in the show's own inimitable style. So given the fact that we have no idea who would have control over these chemical weapons in a failed Syria, remind us again why we have to do this? The danger is... The more reluctant you are and the more deliberative you are, the danger is that you can start looking weak. If they sense that strength is not there, that weakness has replaced it, then they go their own way. Bullies and tyrants don't respect weakness. Oh, right, we have to bomb Syria because we're in seventh grade. <laughs> But it was after clips of Donald Rumsfeld, Paul Bremer and Bill Kristol that Stuart really let rip with a summer holiday's worth of pent-up liberal righteousness. <gasps> hey everybody, the idiot parade is in town! <laughs> shut the f*** up! Shut the f*** up! Shut the f*** up! Shut the f*** up! More victory snatched from the jaws of tragedy on Channel 4 with this sober, moving and infrastructurally sound documentary time to memorialise September the 11th. Constructed from footage by artist and filmmaker Marcus Robinson over seven years, you would need a heart of stone not to be stirred by the defiance of superhuman collective endeavour captured in vertiginous time-lapse and given a Massive Attack-style soundtrack. What stopped this 80-minute film being a particularly lavish and historic example of hard-hat porn was the contribution made by the individuals, who were literally riveting. Atlas from Rockefeller Center, Brooklyn Bridge, Yankee Stadium, New Tower, Cluster Building, Empire State, and the old Twin Towers. Not bad, huh? New York, baby. <laughs> Love that dainty little fruit salad. There was a serious side too. The memories are always there. When I was working in the hub, laying our footings in, and um, we came to the slurry wall, there was maybe 10 of us that stood around saying, this was never supposed to see daylight. Never. I'm not really a spiritual guy, but I know that this site is being taken care of in a, in a, in a different way. It's, it's just something about this place. I, I, you feel it. You feel it in you. Hey, cheer up. It could never happen again. As long as America doesn't do anything stupid like, I don't know, meddle in the Middle East. Shut the f*** up! <laughs> Just wrote that song today. 